You're listening to episode number 10 of the Queen of Your Castle podcast. Today's episode is all about living a double life. I'm not kidding. It's all about living a double life. We are going to be delving into the reasons that most people have two parts of themselves that do not integrate with each other. And I'm going to have you explore what types of parenting decisions that you're making and whether or not you may be setting your children or your stepchildren up to also living a double life. Before we get into it, I just want to quickly note that right now I am hosting a free training for stepmoms who are looking to become more peaceful, feel valued, feel respected, get confident, finally step into this space as a stepmom where you feel like you've got it figured out. So if you want to sign up for this training, then you can go to bit.ly slash happy stepmom. That is B-I-T dot L-Y slash happy stepmom. Where would you take your life if you knew you could not fail? I get it. As a stepmom, mom, and entrepreneur, sometimes it can feel like what everyone else expects of you versus what you dream about for yourself are on opposite ends of the spectrum. As a woman, you're taught from a very young age what society thinks you're worth based on how you look, how you behave, and how much money you are allowed to bring in. But I'm here to show you that you can be the woman who has it all and not just on the outside. I'm Brittany Lynch, and you are the queen of your castle. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the queen of your castle podcast. I am your host, Brittany Lynch. Thank you everybody who reached out last week and wished me a happy birthday. That was so thoughtful of everyone. I I felt so loved. I felt so loved. So thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Congratulations to our winners who are the happy, proud owners of 31 Days of the Step Queen Unmindset Journal Prompts. I can't wait to see where those prompts take you and implementing those new thought patterns in your life will take you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So today's episode um, is about parenting, okay? It's about parenting, step-parenting, kind of shifting these paradigms that most people believe about parenting that may or not be true, but there's no truths in life. (laughs) There's no truths in life and everything is an illusion, but that's the story for another day. So where this idea for this episode came from is that I've started implementing something called forgiveness work into my life. And so throughout that process... What that looks like is that I'm pulling out old skeletons from my closet, old skeletons, old things that cause me guilt and shame and remorse and make me feel bad and make me feel like I'm a shitty person, stuff that I'm holding on to, old roots that I have planted, old everything, things I wish I wouldn't have done in my life that I've done. And throughout that work, once you pull those out, you acknowledge them, you feel them, you release them, and then you become lighter. You become lighter, you peel off the onion layers and you get to become lighter and you don't have to live in shame anymore. And so something that's come up for me as I've been doing this work is I've realized, I've realized that I've, I've for a long time, for a long time in my life, I was essentially living a double life. I was essentially living a double life. I had one persona that was this like high achieving perfectionist, captain of the sports teams, straight A's, worked two jobs, had a respectable career, da, 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 da. And then I had a dark side, right? And I, I did not allow either side, my good side and my bad side, for lack of a better term. I didn't allow my light side and my dark side to have anything to do with each other. I was either one Brittany or I was, I actually had a nickname. It was called Bratney. (laughs) That's not a joke. I was either Brittany or I was Bratney. Okay. So essentially I was living a double life for a long, 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 long time. I lived a double life. And I was talking to my husband Seamus about this um, a couple of weeks ago. And 
we were talking about this, like living double lives and why kids start living double lives and how this becomes, how this comes about. And so it got me thinking about where specifically in my life I learned that I was not allowed to be uh, imperfect, right? Because this creation and this me beginning to live this double life didn't come from me wanting to live a double life. It was, it was a protective mechanism that I developed, right? It was an adaptation that I learned to protect myself. And in every single human on this planet, there are, there are parts that society wants to see and there are parts that society does not want to see. And so we run into problems when we do not allow the parts of ourselves that everyone shares. Everyone has evil inside of them. Everyone. If you don't believe me, watch the, Stan- the Stanford prison experiment or read up about it. Okay. Everybody has evil inside of them, but where we run into trouble and we feel all of this kind of discord and disalignment is when we don't allow ourselves not to be perfect human beings. And usually that starts in childhood because we're programmed as kids, as kids to follow the rules. And if you grew up in the generation that I did or that our parents grew up in, or that maybe you're raising your kids in, you think that punishment is the answer to get your kids to conform and turn them into who you think that they should be. Well, one of the problems with this is that you're teaching them to live a double life because everyone is still going to have those dark parts inside of them. And we need to figure out a way to integrate the dark parts that aren't going to be harmful that we can acknowledge and say, look, I see this part of me. I see this dark part of me, but I'm not going to let it take over instead of just pretending it's not there until nobody's looking. Right. So I got started thinking about where my, where my beginnings of this double life, where did this come from? Okay. And so it, I went back in my memory and I remembered, I remembered this instant of when things started shifting for me. So it was May long weekend. Uh, if you're not Canadian, May long weekend is a, a long weekend in uh, May. That's just a long weekend. Anyway, it's a big deal in Canada because it's like the first weekend people go camping and even though it always snow, even though it always snows, people go camping, but it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It means summer's coming and I mean, Canadians don't need an excuse to drink, but that is one of them, May long weekend. So it's May long weekend. I'm about, I think I was about 15. I think I was 15 years old at the time. And I went out with my friends on this May long weekend, Friday after school. And I was given a curfew of 10 o'clock PM by my mom and my stepdad. Okay. So 10 o'clock PM, I want you to note, I want to note that at this time that this had happened, I was a straight A student. I had won an award for having the highest academic average in my grade in the entire province. I was captain of sports teams. I was literally like the perfect child by this time. So my curfew is 10 o'clock and I got home at 10.03, 10.03 p.m three minutes late. Okay. And my stepdad was standing at the door waiting for me. And I came through and he said, why were you late? And I tried lying. I said, we had to get gas. And he said, what gas station was open at this hour? And I'm like, the max on the top of the hill, which I pulled totally out of my ass, but it was, but I knew he didn't believe me and I was lying. Okay. So he said, since you were three minutes late, you are grounded for three days. One day grounding for every minute that you were late. Okay. So I was never late for curfew again. I'll tell you that. I was never late for curfew again. Okay. Now, if you are a power and control parent or a power and control step parent or a punishing parent or step parent, you might be commending my stepdad's choice for this punishment, for this three days, for three minutes late punishment. But, 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 but. And there are so many people who parent from this paradigm that I think it's such an important conversation to have. Keep in mind the paradigm of punishment as I continue this story, okay? So anyway, I'm grounded now for three days, which is the entire duration of the rest of the long weekend. And I'm 15. 
I'm like a perfect student, like a literal perfect student. I'd never stepped out of line. I'd never been late for curfew. I'd never, ever, this wasn't like a common behavior that he was like putting his foot down. It was like my first time fucking up basically. And so I'm pissed because I'm 15 and I had plans all weekend. And it wasn't like normal for me. It wasn't typical for me. And there was no conversations about why were you late, right? It was just well, I mean, he said, why were you late? But it wasn't like an open invitation to have a conversation about, about me, like losing track of time. It was, it was, the punishment was already decided by the time I walked through the door. So now my whole entire weekend is gone. I'm grounded from TV. I'm grounded from the internet, from dial up internet back in the day, grounded from internet, no friends, nothing. I'm basically just like stuck in my room now for three days after I have three days of plans. So I'm pissed, right? I'm 15 year old girl and I'm pissed. I also want to note that this punishment, this boundary, this, this expectation, sure, there was an expectation that I would come home on time, but this expectation was not communicated beforehand. I had no idea. This was the first time I'd ever heard that for every minute late that you are, this is how many days grounded that you are, right? I've, I, this was the first time I heard about it. So the first time I got this consequence or the first time I knew about this consequence is when it was being given to me. So for me, of course, like I'm 15 years old and in my essence, in this moment, it felt like I was, I had gotten my first speeding ticket for going three over the limit, except instead of getting a warning or even getting a ticket, I got put in jail for three days. This is how it felt to me at the time. Okay. So parents who are listening, this is why you're going to, you're going to see really quickly what I mean by this, but this is why setting up family rules is so crucial. And when you work with me, when you work with me, we work on setting up family rules because having clear expectations and clear boundaries laid out before, before your stepkids can't, because if you don't know what the boundaries are, how do you know if you're stepping outside of them? If you don't know what the expectations are, how do you know when you're not meeting them? right? If you and your partner have different expectations, who do, how do your kids know who to listen to? How do your stepkids know who to listen to? How do they know if they're right or if they're wrong? Are you just handing out punishments to try and get them to conform because you want to control them? Or is this something common in your house that they, everyone knows the expectations? You have a rule chart literally pasted and printed on your front door, or is everyone just like going around upset because you're not meeting their expectations, but no one knows what these expectations are? Okay. So here we go. We're going to get to the juice part right away. I promise. So now I'm grounded for the rest of the long weekend. And like I had just mentioned, the punishment worked, right? Because I was never late for curfew ever again. I was never late for curfew ever again. So if this was the lesson that he was trying to impose on me was that you should be punctual, that part worked. Okay. So punishment is effective in that capacity. However, Guess what started happening after that moment in my life? I started sneaking out. I started coming home for curfew and then leaving again after everyone went to sleep. I started doing things I wasn't supposed to do as long as I could get away with them. And now the trajectory of my life changes right? Now I'm in this place where the trajectory of my life is changing. Now I'm living a double life. Now I'm dipping my toes into living a double life. Now I'm dipping my toes into what can I get away with, right? Not what's right and wrong, but what can I get away with? Because when you start living your life from a place of how can I avoid getting in trouble versus what is the right thing to do? That's a very, very, very dangerous space to live in, right? That's a very dangerous space to, li to live in. Like looking back at the thing, at the situations and positions that I had put myself into when I was a teenager, sneaking out, having my parents have no idea where I was while I'm dying from alcohol poisoning in a field somewhere, that probably would have been avoided if there would have been a conversation. Not a hundred percent likely, but that probably would have been avoided if there would have been a conversation about what curfew, why is curfew important? Why do you need to be home at this time, Right. Why do we need to know where you are? Why is it a safety concern that we know where you are? But none of those conversations were had. So I took matters into my own hands. If you know me, you know my biggest thing in life is that I don't like being told what to do. 
And that has been, that has been the way that I've been my whole entire life, right? I'm an Enneagram eight, Enneagram eights, where my, where my Enneagram eights at? Woo! Cheers to that. So anyway, now the trajectory of my life is changing. Now I'm living a double life. Now I'm avoiding getting in trouble, but I'm doing bad things, right? Bad, quote unquote, bad, bad things, things I shouldn't have been doing, things that are putting my safety in jeopardy, right? Literally things that are putting my safety in jeopardy, but I'm getting away with them. The only thing I cared about was not getting in trouble. It wasn't my safety. So now since I'm sneaking out later, I also started hanging out with a different kind of person. I started hanging out with a different type of crowd, right? And so my husband, Seamus, uses a, he uses a golf analogy to explain things like this. I suck at golf, so I'm going to probably butcher, the, I'm going to probably butcher this analogy, but I'm going to do my best. Basically, he says life is kind of like a golf swing. One small degree of change over enough time and distance will alter your trajectory completely. Okay. So what I'm inviting you to consider here in the context of your life and your parenting choices and your past and your stories and your teenage years is this. First off, if your intention when you parent is to control your children and to punish them into conformity, then make no mistake, you are playing a very, very dangerous game. And if your justification for spanking your kids, for example, is that you got spanked and you turned out fine, I would ask you to consider how thinking it's okay to hit someone who doesn't even have a fully developed brain is acceptable. Thinking that is okay means you're not okay, right? And I'm not judged. This isn't a judgment. This is just because we need to explore these things just because this is the way it was done when we were kids doesn't mean it's the right way or the best way for our family. But please don't spank your kids. I also would invite you to consider the actual long-term damaging effects of punishment. It doesn't accomplish what you want it to accomplish. It might in the short term, they might not be late for curfew, but what are the implications of punishing them, right? If they don't understand why you're punishing them, There's a huge difference between punishment and discipline, a huge, huge difference between punishment and discipline. So if your justification then for grounding, right, is to make your kids sit in your room and think about what you did, then I would ask you to consider if your expectations were communicated on the front end, I would also invite you to consider that they're not sitting in their room thinking about what they did. They're sitting in their room thinking about how much you hate them and how much they hate you potentially, They're sitting in your room figuring out ways that they can get away with that behavior because grounding doesn't resolve the underlying root cause issue. If you are using punishment from a place of reactivity, if you're not in control of your emotions and you just escalate and you just punish because you fly off the handle, because you failed as a parent, you failed to establish boundaries in the context of your home in the first place, which, make no mistake, is a responsibility of yours as a parent, then it is your responsibility to figure out how to bring this to your family in a way that you are moving from punishment to discipline, okay? So if you are parenting or step parenting from a space that makes you feel the most comfortable, that makes you feel the most comfortable and in control, instead of coming from a space of allowing your children to be who they are, then I would all but guarantee that you're making your lives way more difficult and stressful and shameful than they have to be. And I don't want that for you. And I don't want that for your kids. And I don't want that for your stepkids. And I don't want that for your partner. And like me sitting here right now saying this, I'm certainly not perfect. I'm certainly not perfect. I'm not a perfect parent. I'm not a perfect step parent. As much as I wish to, I could be a shame-free disciplinarian, I'm sure I'm still doing things to my kids that they're going to be sitting on a podcast in 20 years talking about how bad I screwed them up. Like, I'm not perfect. I just, this is what I know to be true in this moment as I'm sitting here recording this. And this might change. This might change as the research changes. This might change as the evidence changes. This might change. Like, my stepson and Rory, my son, could not be more different people. So the way that we approach their discipline is going to look a lot different, Right. My husband, Seamus, he's not perfect, right? 
but we're both doing our best and we're both coming at our ki- coming at a place of disciplining our kids from a place of love instead of shame and punishment and control. As challenging as that is and as different as that is from I specifically was raised, it's necessary because like I said, I lived a double life for a long time. So many people in this world have no idea that they can make different choices. Choices that release them from shame, that break cycles of shame for their kids and their grandkids and their great grandkids. We get to make a choice. We get to make a choice about what our life looks like. We get to make a choice about how we parent. We get to make a choice not to spank our kids. We get to make a choice not to beat our kids. We get to make a choice not to punish them. We get to make that choice. How liberating and amazing is that, that we get to make that choice. I want you, I want you to release yourself from the shame and the guilt and the punishment that you had put onto you, potentially. And I hope to do that for you. I hope you do that for yourself because when you do that, there's a ripple effect, right? When you break that shame of cycle or that cycle of shame, when you break that cycle of abuse, when you break that cycle of punishment, then you give your kids and your stepkids different tools. And therefore every generation after them benefits from that. A lot of people in this world don't even acknowledge that they're human beings, And we need to sit with that for a second. A lot of people in this world do not acknowledge that they are, in fact, human beings. Human beings are not perfect. It is legitimately impossible to be a perfect human being. Everybody makes mistakes. That includes you. That includes me. That includes our partners. That includes our kids. Everyone makes mistakes. Even my dog, Sailor, she still craps on the floor. Like she makes mistakes. Anything that is alive makes a mistake based on your interpretation of what a mistake means. People who live their lives from a place of joy chalk mistakes up as learning experiences and move on. Humans are the only species who continue to punish themselves and each other for something that happened years ago. I'm going to say that again because it's important. Human beings are the only species who continue to punish themselves and each other for something that happened years ago. So Sailor, like I was just talking about our Sailor, our Doberman, she literally shit on the floor a couple of days ago. But do you think that she's still thinking about how much of a screw up that she is because she can't stop crapping on the floor and it doesn't matter what we do. She can't stop crapping on the floor. No, she doesn't know she's over it. She's shit on the floor. Like she, that's all she cares about. I will tell you, I will tell you for free that she has no shame that she shit on the floor, but human beings, I'm still thinking about it, right? I'm still thinking about it. This is exactly my point. This is exactly my point. So when you really start to dip your toes in and you do this inner work that you need to do or that most people need to do in order to grow and evolve and expand their consciousness, when you really start to dip your toes into this and you release all of this shame, your parent, the way that you show up as a parent and the way that you show up as a step parent will will shift, guaranteed. So I'm inviting you right now to use a different lens to examine your parenting choices through. I really, really honestly would encourage you to reflect if those choices that you're making as a parent are based in shame, based in control, based in punishment. Do you just want your kids to do what you say when you say to do it? Or are you parenting from a conscious perspective? Are you holding space for your kids to test out their environments? in a safe way, in a loving way? Are you parenting from a fear-based perspective, right? Are you entirely fear-based and you're holding your kids back from even experiencing failure, from even experiencing anything uncomfortable, even having an opportunity to make mistakes, to learn from? It's not our job as parents to live our kids' lives. It's not. It's basically not we're supposed sure we we have to keep them alive but it's not our job to impose our belief systems onto them we need to give them a space to explore who they are 
So wherever you're at right now, that is entirely okay. There's no need to get wrapped up in guilt or shame or self-pity or pride or ego or any of that stuff. Wherever you're at is fine. You don't know what you don't know, right? But remember, you're inevitably going to make parenting decisions like a funky golf swing. And those decisions will change the trajectory of your kids, your stepkids, and your life. That one degree, right? One degree changes the trajectory. But I will tell you right now, if it was not for those three minutes past curfew, if it was not for the three subsequent days I spent grounded on my waterbed, listening to Eminem, crying, being an angsty teen, despising my stepfather, all of the other choices that I made to avoid getting in trouble, then 100% without a doubt, I can tell you this, that I would not be here right now sharing this message with you. Cheers to that. I hope this episode got your wheels turning and showed you just how powerful you are. I would invite you to take 30 seconds and tap subscribe to this podcast. When you subscribe to the podcast, then rest assured you will never miss an episode. And in no time, spinning your wheels will be a thing of the past. Thank you for listening and subscribing. And if you enjoyed this episode, it would mean the absolute world to me if after you subscribed, you jumped on over and left me a five-star review and better yet, a written review. I am on a mission to let every mom and stepmom know that you can create the life of your dreams. And I need your help to change the world. The world needs us. Thank you so much for subscribing and leaving me a five-star review. I will see you next week, same time, same place. For more behind the scenes action and to get really up close and personal with me and our beautiful step family, jump on over to Instagram and follow me at the step queen. Don't be shy. Send me a DM. Tag me in your posts. Tag me in your stories. Let me know what you're up to and what about the podcast has been blowing your mind. I cannot wait to get to know you better and Instagram is my jam. I love you so much. I love you so much. Make it rain, girlfriend.